Shall we rise up, please? Tonight we are studying on the Holy Spirit. And it's an important subject of the Bible. And it's not a theoretical subject. It's a subject that taught you to stir up a desire to receive. And so as we listen to the study, and you follow through and follow along, there should be the desire in your heart to receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And also to pray for that desire that the power of the Holy Ghost will be upon you. Close your eyes. Sing with me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, break me, melt me, melt me, mold me, mold me and feel me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Close your eyes, raise your voice, sing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mulch me and feel me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me once more. Spirit of the living God, fall Pressure me, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me, break me. May me, mold me, and feel me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on just once more. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall Fresh on me, break me, melt me, 
Father, we thank you tonight for the great prophecy of Joel. Thank you for the great promise of Jesus. Thank you because of the outpouring of the Spirit. And thank you because the Spirit is available today to feel, to saturate, to empower, to energize. As many as lift up holy hands, sanctified hearts, desiring and willing that you will fill them. Lord, we pray that you rule over the meeting here tonight in Jesus' name. All childishness, all carelessness, all attitude of looking at the things of God with levity and frivolity, take it away from us in Jesus' name. The power of the Holy Ghost that the disciple waited for, tarried for in the upper room. Ten whole days seeking your face. We pray, O oh Lord, that same power will be available to every one of us here tonight in Jesus' name. And whatever is the hindrance or the blockage or the wall of partition or the stumbling block between us and receiving the power of the Holy Ghost tonight take it away in Jesus name the devil knows that when the church is full of the Holy Ghost its works will be destroyed the weak will be strengthened the, 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 uh, the, the sick will be healed the oppressed will be delivered. The devil knows that when we are filled, energized by the Holy Ghost, will wreck, will ruin the works of the devil. Therefore, he tries to do everything to prevent the church of the living God from moving on into the depths and the heights and the lengths and the breadth of the experience and the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we're not ignorant of his devices. Therefore, Lord, tonight we come before you in unity of faith, standing against the devil and all the works of the devil. We pray tonight you open the windows of heaven, pour the spirit down in Jesus' name. In our own hearts, in our own minds, in our own understanding, all within and around us, Clear the way, O oh Lord, so that there is nothing within, there is nothing without that will hinder the outpouring of your spirit upon us tonight in Jesus' name. What will Israel have done without a spirit filled Moses? What will Judah have done without a spirit filled Elijah, Elisha? What will Israel have done without a spirit filled Isaiah? And what will they have done without Jesus Christ, who moved in the power of the Holy Ghost in their midst? What will the early church have become if the disciples were not filled, saturated with the power of the Holy Ghost? And in Paul the Apostle, that went into all those places in the missionary journey. If he didn't have the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost in him, what would he have become? And what can we be as a church in a world, a world full of the paths of darkness? What can we be without the power of the Holy Ghost? Will be nothing. The people of the world will be torturing us. The paths of darkness will be riding over us. There will be many, many impossibilities in our lives. What can we do without the spirit, without the baptism, without the gifts of the Holy Ghost? That's why we are praying tonight, O oh Lord, whatever it is that will hinder the outflow, the outpouring of the spirit of God upon us tonight, take it away in Jesus' name. How I pray that every brother here, every sister here, as we look at the word of God, you go beyond what we read, you go beyond what we study, you go beyond what we hear, and you just grab them, every brother, every sister, and pour your spirit upon them. 
and pour your spirit upon them and pour your spirit upon them that once again there will be a mighty revival a mighty revival in every leader a mighty revival in every worker a mighty revival in every member a mighty revival in the old church lord we pray tonight pour out your spirit in jesus name confirm your promise fulfill the covenant let the weak become strong tonight in jesus name lord we're looking up to you we don't want to just come and study here tonight just hear the word just read the word we want to experience what you have for us and what you have promised us and we pray oh lord your word that never comes out without fulfilling that which you have sent it let it bear fruit in every heart in every life in the whole church tonight in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered and we will see the fulfillment and the manifestation the weak will become strong the cold will become hot and all the lukewarm they will become fervent tonight in jesus name thank you because we know it's done in jesus mighty name we pray please be seated when joel chapter 2 and as we look at joel chapter 2 we're looking at verses 28 and 29 Joel 2 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions also upon my servants and upon my and made in those days will i pour out my spirit that's what we're looking at tonight the prophecy of the outpouring of the spirit as we are pointed out in our previous studies the prophecy in the book of joel has application to judah at that time but then it has application to nations beyond judah as we look at the book of Jonah, there was a near fulfillment. And then there was a far future fulfillment. Actually, as we look at the book of Jonah, as we compare with the Acts of the Apostles, you will see that one, it was for the Jewish nation. Two, it was for the Gentile nations. For the early church, the Spirit of God came upon them in fulfillment to what Joel had said on the day of Pentecost. But it wasn't just on that day alone. It didn't terminate on that day. It went on and on and on. And it was fulfilled many times for many people in the Acts of the Apostles. And since that time, all believing souls who prayed in a fervency and who prayed with faith and wavering faith and prayed with great expectation looking at the promises of the lord in the bible all those people till the present time they have also received the fulfillment of the outpouring of the spirit upon them and this fulfillment of the outpouring of the spirit the prophecy and the promise will continue until the second coming of christ in fact until the consummation of all things look at acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts chapter 2 when the holy ghost first came on them and in chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and they appeared unto them cloving tongues like as of fire and it filled and it sat on each of them and they were all filled of the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave utterance eventually people came together and peter needed to make an explanation of what had just happened to them because the people that came together they wondered they didn't know the prophecy they didn't know the fulfillment they didn't know of what the john, john the baptist had said that one coming mighty are greater than i he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. They didn't know what Jesus Christ has said. Because being with them many days, 
He showed by many infallible proofs that it was he he had risen from the dead. And he told them not to depart from Jerusalem until they received the power of the Holy Ghost. Because as John had said, that I truly baptized you with water. But he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. These people then, they didn't understand when they had them speaking in tongues. When they had them speaking known languages. They were surprised. They were amazed, astonished. And then Peter needed to make an explanation. Verse 14. But Peter standing up. What the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them. Ye men of Judah. And all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. Be this known unto you. And akin unto my words. For these are not drunk. As he supposed seeing it is. But the third hour of the day. Uh, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And then he quoted from Joel, It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And so Peter explained to them why the people had been filled, saturated with the Holy Ghost and the power of the Lord coming upon them. As I told you, the coming of the Holy Ghost upon the sanctified vessels did not end in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Look at chapter 4 verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the watch of God with boldness. As the church kept on depending upon the Lord, trusting the Lord, leaning upon the Lord, praying to the Lord, and they were just being filled and filled and filled and saturated with the Holy Ghost. It didn't stop there. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, amazed, surprised. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they had them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then preach they him to tarry certain days. So he could teach them and make them to understand how to make use of the power they had just received. They didn't terminate there. Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard, whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized, if you never had that name, Holy Ghost? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, we shall come after him, that he is on Christ Jesus. When they had this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. That means in the authority of the Lord, by the commandment of the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So they could hear the name Holy Ghost now for the first time in their baptism. And when in verse 6, Paul had laid hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And so you see that the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel, the prophecy of the outpouring of the Spirit, just started being fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And on and on and on. And as we look at church history, it continued to be fulfilled. One here, one there, one over there. Until eventually in the, in the 20th century, 
1904 to 1906, the Welsh revival, the Azusa revival, uh, the Lord poured out the Holy Ghost, as he said in Joel, I'll give them the early reign, that's Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, and the former reign, and then I'll give them the latter reign. That's what is happening in this generation, to prepare the fruit for the coming of the Lord. Uh, to really understand uh, the full implication of uh, what we're reading in Joel, we're going to divide our study to three points. Part one, the prophecy. Number two, the promise. Number three, our preparation. Number one, the prophecy. Uh, we're looking at Joel again, chapter two, reading verses 28 and 29. The prophecy. And it shall come to pass afterward. That already sets it in the language of prophecy because it says, this is afterward. And it says, it shall come to pass. It will happen. It will be fulfilled. But it will be afterward. It will be after something has taken place that then I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they'll be partakers of it. All flesh, your sons and your daughters included, they shall prophesy. Your old men, all flesh, the old men to you will be included. They shall dream dreams. Not ordinary dreams. Almost everybody dreams. And there are dreams coming out of activities of the day without being filled with the Holy Ghost. There are dreams coming out of the flesh, out of the thoughts of the mind, without being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, there are dreams that are generated from the satanic source, just to torment people, harass people, make them afraid, not being baptized in the Holy Ghost. But when they are filled with the Holy Ghost, your old men shall dream dreams. It's a God-given dream, spirit-inspired dream, a dream that has significance. Do you remember dreams in the Bible? Joseph had dream, not from the flesh, from the Lord. Do you remember dreams in the Bible? Joseph, the uh, husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus, had dreams, significant dreams. Do you remember dreams in the Bible? In the night vision, God appeared to Paul. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Significant dreams, not ordinary dreams. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Shall, shall see visions. Visions of things to be accomplished. Visions. When, when there is no vision, the people perish. Vision as to where should we go? What should we do? How should we spend our lives? And how should we carry out the great commission? How do we glorify the Lord? Vision related to the work of the kingdom. And then it says, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, when I pour out my spirit, the bunch and the free, the educated, the elite and the illiterate, and the people that are servants and the people that are masters, everyone, I'll pour my spirit upon them. It is prophecy of Joel. Or was it an isolated prophecy? Not at all. Actually, many, many years before Joel, uh, Moses, that great man of God, who had the Spirit of God upon him, he was to distribute part of the Spirit upon the leaders in Israel. And then there were 70 of them, 68 were in the, sea, in the tabernacle, and they received the Spirit of God. And two, they were not in the tabernacle, and yet they received. And then Joshua came and said, look at these people, Medad and the elder, they, 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 they are prophesying also in the camp without coming to the tabernacle. Why don't you stop them? It was then that Moses gave out this prophetic utterance in Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11, reading there in verse 29. And Moses said unto him, and be thou for my sake, would God, that all the Lord's people, young and old, all flesh, all the Lord's people, those who are saved and sanctified, those who are made holy, made ready for the reception, for the receptivity of the Holy Ghost, would God, all the Lord's people were, uh, were prophets, and that the Spirit of the Lord, the Lord will put a Spirit upon them. And you see that, and that's the prophecy right there, that even Moses was saying, hey, do you think I'm the only one that ought to have the power of the Holy Ghost, and the visions of the Holy Ghost, and the revelations of the Holy Ghost, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and the manifestation, the operation of the various uh, manifestation of power, whether in Egypt or in the wilderness, whether with the unbelievers, Egyptians, or with the believers, the Israelites, no, I'm not supposed to be the only one, 
would God that all the people of God, all flesh, will have the Spirit of God upon them and everybody will just minister and act like prophets. There's a prophecy right there in Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah chapter 32. Reading there from verse 9. Isaiah 32 verse 9. Rise up, ye women not at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vantage shall fail, and the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. And be troubled, and ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare, and gird and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the tears, for the teeth, for the pleasant fields, and for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, and a multitude of the cities shall be left. And the forts and the towers shall be for days forever, a joy to the world as is a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Can you see the similarity between Joel and Isaiah? Because from chapter 1, Joel had been telling the people lament and weep and cry and mourn. Because from chapter 1, Joel had been telling the people, is there any fruit? Do we have the offering that we are to have? In from Joel chapter 1, chapter 2, he called upon the priests. He called upon the ministers of the Lord. He called upon the whole congregation. He called upon the young as well. Even the people that are the young people that are still sucking. He said, come on and weep and lament because uh, there was no fruit. That's what I also was telling them. He said, hey, look at it. Only thorns and briars and dryness and devastation. Then he said, a change is coming. Exactly as Joel had said in verse 15 now, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. And so it says again, Although the devastation had been there, although the destruction had been there, although the scarcity and the need and the poverty had been there, spiritual poverty and material poverty, although those things had been there, the Lord said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And he said, all those things will continue until the spirit be poured upon us. That means uh, there's going to be lack, spiritual lack, spiritual need, until the Spirit of God comes upon us in a baptismal outpouring measure. In Ezekiel chapter 39. Ezekiel chapter 39. Reading there in verse 29. Here in verse 29, here is what Ezekiel is telling us. Chapter 39, verse 29. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, says the Lord. Again, is the prophecy that uh, Ezekiel is mentioning. He says it here, I have poured out my spirit. That doesn't mean actually it had been done. It means that the Lord has so decided. It's like when it said a child is given, his son is born. And it's like when it says a child is born and a son is given. And upon him shall be uh, the government, the authority, the royalty. It, it said it as if it's, been, it's done already. That's how Ezekiel put the prophecy. But again, he emphasized see, that the spirit is coming. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon the people of God. And how the early church was so interested. And they abandoned every other thing. They abandoned themselves into the hands of the Lord. Surrendered to the hands of the Lord. Waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Immediately the New Testament opened. Matthew chapter 3. Here John the Baptist came talking to the people. And following after the same lineage. The same thing that Joel had said, Isaiah had said, and Moses had said, and Ezekiel had said, and Jeremiah had said, and all the prophets had said. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. I indeed immerse you into water 
baptize you into water, dip you into water, and put you totally under the water so that you can be totally submerged, immersed with the, with the water. But he that cometh after me is mightier, is greater, is higher than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you. He shall immerse you. He shall dip you into. It shall totally saturate you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He was telling them that Christ is coming. And when Christ comes, he will not only save you. He will not only sanctify you. He will not only make you holy in conduct and character. He will make you mighty and powerful because he is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and he's going to baptize you with power, with fire. Talking about Elijah, the prophet of fire. Talking about being zealous. Talking about being fervent. Talking about never being cold. Talking about never being lukewarm. Talking about running and not getting tired. Talking about your serving the Lord in the burning, in the fire of the Holy Ghost. When Christ comes, that's what he's going to do. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will surely punch his flow and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. It is fire that is going to be burning on the altar of your heart, and that fire will burn everything that is useless, everything that is worthless, with a, a fire that never goes out, unquenchable fire. And then we're told in, in uh, James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Here James uh, uh, was uh, is using a language similar to the language of uh, Joel. Uh, using the agricultural language. He's talking about the people as a planting of the Lord. And as a planting of the Lord, he's going to give them the former rain. And the former rain is going to make them take root. It's going to make uh, the, the, the plant uh, to germinate. It's going to bring out fruit. But then when the harvest time is coming to ripen the fruit, he'll bring in the latter rain. And he's comparing the people of God to that. And comparing the spirit of God to water. The rain that comes upon the people of God. In James chapter 5, reading in verse 7, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband man waited. For the precious fruit of the earth is referring to us believers as a precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. That is, it is the same prophecy that uh, James is still talking about, saying that uh, the Spirit of God will come and it will come like rain. And when he comes like rain, he will refresh us. He will strengthen us. He'll take the dryness away. He'll take the drowsiness away. He'll take the spiritual slumber away. The Spirit of God will just come upon us and sweep away all our human weaknesses. And then we'll become strong in the Lord and strong in the power of his Spirit. Come back to Joel chapter 2. And, and notice some things that Joel spoke about. It is very important. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Hey, do you notice there what it says? Afterward. What, Joel, what do you mean by that word afterward? It means after some things are taking place. After that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. What does it mean? Afterward, after verse 12. Therefore also now, Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says the Lord, Turn ye even unto me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, and shall come to pass. Afterward, after that verse 12, I pour my spirit upon all flesh. It demands the repentance. That number one, we turn to the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We turn away from sin, we turn away from Satan, we turn away from self. And then we turn to the Lord completely. And then Joel says, it shall come to pass after that, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. But that's not the end in verse 13. Rend your heart and not your garment. Turn unto the Lord your God, for his gracious is telling us it shall come to pass after you rend your heart, after you tear your heart, after you rebuke yourself. You say, my heart, why are you hard? My heart, why are you as hard as a stone? 
my heart why is it you are not responding to the watch of god my heart why is it you are so callous and the water of the world and the sword of the world and the fire of the world will not penetrate you tear that heart and not your garment and the stony heart is taken away and the lord gives you a heart of flesh in verse 13 it says for he is gracious and merciful is telling us number three after you have experienced the grace of god the mercy of god after his grace has blotted out has taken away the condemnation and the guilt after the grace of god has been lavished upon you even the second time and that grace that brings salvation appearing to all men it has appeared unto you teaching you that denying ungodliness and worldly laws you shall now serve him as soberly it shall be sober it should be holy and should be just after that grace has come to you joel says it shall come to pass afterward after that i'll pour my spirit upon all flesh but then he tells us in verse 15 blow the trumpet in zion sanctify it fast call a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the elders and gather the children and those that suck the breast and let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet is saying after you take this thing very serious and you concentrate on prayer and you know that the prayer we're talking about is more than your honeymoon and you come out of your honeymoon and you come out of your bed chamber and then even the children they count it very serious and they brush every activity aside and everybody calling upon the lord in verse 17 and let the priest and the ministers of the lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them cry spare thy people O lord give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them wherefore should they say among the people where is their god when the people of god come together in such heart rendering prayer it shall come to pass after that i'll pour my spirit upon all flesh afterward in verse 20 but i will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land that is barren and desolate after that i'll pour my spirit upon all flesh when the northern army when the tormenting army when the oppressing army when all the things you have complained about relating to the enemy of the christian the thing that were torturing you when all those things have been driven away it shall come to pass after the removal and the destruction of the northern army i will pour my spirit upon all flesh that's what the joel was telling the people in verse 27 and ye shall know that i am in the midst of israel ye shall know that i am in the midst of israel and that i am the lord your god and none else and my people shall never be ashamed it's after that after verse 27 when we allow the lord to reign reign master jesus reign master jesus in my heart on my will i surrender everything when the people that even see you when they know that jesus christ when they know that the lord is occupying the throne of your heart and is there prominent and preeminent and is ruling over everything it shall come to pass afterward i will pour my spirit upon all flesh and it is with that outpouring of the spirit when you are baptized in the holy ghost then uh, many many things will follow the dreams and the visions and the prophecy your sons will prophesy your daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dream and your young men they will see visions too we've seen the uh, prophecy uh, let's look at the promise we'll go to point number two the promise in joel chapter two you will see here that the prophecy contains the promise and the promise offers us the power of the holy ghost the promise is given both in the old testament and the new testament in joel chapter 2 joel chapter 2 look at verse 28 once again and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh that's the promise of god and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions that's the promise and then it says in verse 29 and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days i will pour out my spirit you understand pour out pour out 
pour out it's like you are there and then god takes a bucket of water a drum of water you just pours it on you or better still there you are and then you see the sky black with cloud and the rain just begins to pour begins to pour and there you are and pours upon you and pours upon you and every part of your body the head and the hands and the legs and every part every part is just drenched soaked in the water that has been poured upon you it says that's the way i will do it when you are saved you have a bit of the spirit of god he that has not the spirit of christ is none of his if you are born again the spirit of god is with you and when you are sanctified you have a part you have more of the spirit of god in your life but when you come for this outpouring you have been saved you have been sanctified and, and there you are standing in the presence of god and he just pours the rain pours the rain pours the rain upon you you are refreshed you are strengthened you are empowered and the weakness is taken away you feel as if you are born you, you are just born again into the kingdom you feel as if there is a new power there is a new energy and that comes through you and sometimes you feel it like fire just all over you and it says i'll pour my spirit upon all flesh in isaiah chapter 44 isaiah also he saw this coming and as he saw it coming, he told the people of God, it's coming, it's coming. The outpouring of the Spirit of God on the people that are thirsty. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And that is the same thing I was talking about. He said, I'm going to pour my spirit upon you. And when that spirit comes, you will recognize it has come. And I told you about John the Baptist. He saw it coming. And he knew it will come. It was prophecy to him. It was also the promise of God given to the people of God in Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, they are in verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I need baptize you, I immerse you, I dip you into water. But one mightier, greater, higher than I cometh, the lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with what? Tell me out loud. And with fire. And when somebody is baptized in the Holy Ghost, You'll not be pushing the person. You'll not be begging the person. Your water will boil. The steam will come. The fire will burn. And there'll be something inside you being stirred up. You will open your mouth. You will want to evangelize. You will want to run the race. You will want to preach the gospel. You will want to pray. You will not be sleeping during time of prayer. And there is a fire burning. It burns inside you. When you are deep, when you are immersed in the Holy Ghost, you will want to read the Bible. You will want to go through the pages of the Bible. There is something irresistible that comes upon your life when you are filled, when you are saturated, when you are deep, when you are immersed, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. And then Jesus Christ, he spoke about it very much in many, many languages in John chapter, in John chapter 7. John chapter 7, reading from verse 37. In John 7, 37, in the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Holy of the Spirit, with they that believe on him, they have believed already, they have believed already, they that believed on him shall receive. Then it says, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But then he told them very clearly that if you believe, you can come unto him and drink. Out of your belly, out of your innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. 
Hey, you are there, you need to preach, you need to evangelize. I don't know what to say, you will know what to say. I don't remember the word when the people are before me, it's after they have gone. I remember I should have said this, I should have said this. And when they questioned me according to the scriptures, uh, how about this, how about this, I didn't know what I would answer them until after they had left. It came to me later. This is what I should have said. When they bring you between, before the council, do not premeditate what you will say. At that hour, your father will give unto you what you will say. It will come out of you as rivers of living water gushing out of your innermost being. And as a promise image, and then we're told in John chapter 14. John chapter 14 from verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. I may comfort unto you, he said, but another comforter will come. I've been with you encouraging you, another encourager will come. I've been here strengthening you, another strengthener will come. I've been here giving you hope and giving you solace and consolation, another will come. When you have the Holy Ghost, when you have the Holy Ghost, he's a comforter. Yes, it's a paraclete. And it will do quite a lot in your life. It says, it will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but she know him. For he dwelleth with you. You are born again. He dwelleth with you. I'm going to pray for you to be sanctified. He dwelleth with you. When you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, he shall be in you. And then it will be complete within and without, with you and in you. John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send, there's a promise, I will send unto you from the Father. Even the spirit of truth will proceed from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall be a witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And then he tells us, in chapter 16, verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient. It's better. It's more profitable for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. That's the promise. And when he is coming, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When the Holy Ghost is in you, you cannot keep quiet when you see sin being perpetrated anywhere. You have the Holy Ghost in you, you have the fire in you, you have the zeal in you, and you see the name of the Lord being dragged to the mud, and you see people committing sin with impunity. Anywhere, the spirit of the evangelist is in you, and you will talk about the Savior, and you will talk about the danger and the peril of living in sin when he's come. He will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment to come, of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged I have many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you to all truth you are saved you are not in a capacity spiritually to receive everything the Lord wants to teach. You are sanctified. You are not in a capacity. You are not in the mode to receive everything the Lord wants to reveal. Here, Jesus Christ had been with his own disciples three and a half years, teaching them about many things, about the kingdom, about himself, about heaven, about hell, about many things. And yet he said, I have yet many things to say unto you. Although you are saved, and I'm even going to pray for you in the next chapter, and you are going to be sanctified, yet you cannot bear them now. There is a kind of knowledge, the depth and the height, the mystery of the knowledge of the world that is reserved only for the people that are filled, baptized, saturated with the Holy Ghost. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. For he and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. 
No wonder. Uh, there, there are some things that Holy Ghost people will do. Spirit baptized believers will do or say that uh, you, you'll be racking your brain. You'll be trying to understand. And you say, if this man, this woman is incomprehensible. I can't understand. Yes, you may not understand. When the spirit has come and it comes with light and it comes with illumination, then you will see how that spirit of God will lead you and guide you into all knowledge. But it's not just knowledge in in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. It's also power. Power from on high. Power from on high. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And ye shall receive and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's not just speaking in tongues that's there. It's not just shaking. It's not just trembling. And it's not just doing some mechanical things people have always done. But power. The power above every power. The power that crushes every other power. The power that subdues every other power. The power that overcomes the devil. The power that energizes you from within, drives you on, moves you on. You run, you are not weary. You walk, you are not paid. You are walking for God and it appears your battery is being charged every time, every time, every time. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in, Ju and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And this power of God is available. Available for everyone that is thirsty. Available for everyone. And it is not only the Jews. It's also for the Gentiles. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. Reading from verse 15. And as I began to speak. The Holy Ghost fell on them. As on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the watch of the Lord. How, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift, the similar gift, as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus, what was I that I could withstand God. Uh, the, the Spirit of God, the power of God is available. And uh, maybe you say, but uh, what's, what's the difference? Whether somebody is baptized in the Holy Ghost or not. Uh, Joel was telling the people that the Holy Ghost will come upon them. And it will be upon all flesh. And the seed that have been reserved only for the prophets to dream dreams. Only for the prophets to prophesy. Only for the prophets to see visions. The things that have been so reserved only for the minority in the land of Israel. It will be given to all of them now that the young men shall see visions and their daughters and sons will prophesy and your old men, they will, they will dream dreams. In Zechariah expresses it. Look at this. In Zechariah, the way Zechariah puts it, when that day comes, when the Holy Ghost comes and it comes upon the people of Israel, Zechariah told them what it will look like. Zechariah chapter 12, reading there in verse 8. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. He said, the day is coming. I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. And take note, take note. That day, that period, he that is feeble among the people, and he said this one is feeble, he'll just be equal with David. And the house of David, the people that are equal, equal to David, he shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And that's what will happen when that Holy Ghost comes, when that power comes. And Jesus put it in a more direct way. When he was talking to his own disciples, when the Holy Ghost will come upon them, in chapter 14 of John, Chapter 14 of John. It says in verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He that believeth on me. The works that I do, he shall do. He said, when that Holy Ghost comes. And it comes upon all flesh. In the new dispensation. In the new covenant. In the new testament. He said, he that believeth on me. The works I do, he shall do. 
He'll be promoted even beyond Elijah, beyond Elisha, beyond David, beyond Isaiah, beyond John the Baptist. The works that I do, he shall do. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to the Father. At such a time, those people will have prayer power that nobody ever knew because whatsoever. Ye shall ask in my name that I will do. The Father, that, uh, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. At that day, at that time when the Holy Ghost has come in that new dispensation. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's a promise the Lord has made to us. How do we get the promise? How about the preparation? Come to Joel chapter 2. Our preparation. Our preparation. Already you see in Joel, how Joel told the people. And he told the people that uh, you have a part to play. Because he says in verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward. And that is, you would have done some things. You would have gone through some things. And it is after those things, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. I told you what the things are from verse 12. Therefore also now says the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garments, and turn unto me, turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knows he will, if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. He said, now, uh, you see how spiritually poor you are? And you see how physically poor you are? You come in, you have nothing to offer to the Lord. Uh, why don't you rend your heart? Why don't you mourn? Why don't you even say a uh, cry unto the Lord? And then the Lord will come. First of all, he will change your condition spiritually and physically. And it will leave a blessing. Then you will be able to have something to give. But then that's not the end. You will blow the trumpet in Zion. And you will sanctify it first and call it a solemn assembly. A solemn assembly, not frivolous assembly. A solemn assembly, not an assembly of hypocritical actions. A solemn assembly, an assembly that is totally devoted to the Lord. We're looking for something. We're preparing for something. We want the blessings of the Lord upon us. A solemn assembly, you gather the people, you sanctify the congregation. You set the congregation apart, assemble the elders, gather the children, even those that suck. And then it says, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. And then the bride out of the closet let the priests and the ministers of the lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people O lord give not thine heritage unto reproach that the heathen should rule over them you see eh, this is a prayer that is coming out of the heart it's not mechanical prayer it's not a kind of prayer we're measuring it's not a kind of prayer we're saying when are we going to stop the prayer it's not a kind of prayer we're praying and we're saying well if i don't sleep in time how do i wake up tomorrow morning to go to my place of work it is a prayer that is gushing out of your heart pouring out of your heart and that's the kind of preparation we need to make and then it's after that and toward, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Ezekiel tells us any kind of preparation the Lord will be expecting from us. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel 36, reading there in verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. First of all, there will be salvation. And all the sins we have committed. All those things will abandon them. We repent of them. And then he says, a new heart will I give unto you. A new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh. He says, he'll sanctify us. He'll circumcise our heart. He'll take the stony heart out. He'll give us a heart of flesh. And then our heart will be so tender and so soft. We'll be so sensitive to the voice of the Lord. And when he wants us to move, we move. Where he wants us to go, we go. What he wants us to say, we say. And we're always looking unto the Lord. Uh, does this please the Lord? Does this satisfy the Lord? It's what the Lord is looking for in little things, in small things, as well as in big things. Our desire, our goal, our aspiration, our, 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 our will is just to please the Lord. A stony heart is gone. A new heart is there. An out of flesh is there. That's the preparation salvation first 
sanctification second and then now number three verse 27 and i will after salvation and i will after sanctification and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them and you see that's the preparation he wants us to make in luke chapter 11 luke chapter 11 is coming to the aspect of prayer now and we've talked about the aspect of repentance we've talked about the aspect of uh, having a solemn assembly we've talked about the aspect of salvation we've talked about the aspect of sanctification now he wants us to really come and pray specifically and ask him for the outpouring of the spirit of god for the fulfillment of the prophecy and the promise upon earth in luke chapter 11 verse 5 and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his in his journey is come to me and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give the i say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity because of his persistent prayer because of his perseverance praying and praying and will never give up because of his asking over and over he says he will rise and give him give him as many as he needed and then he says and i say unto you on the basis of that illustration, I say unto you. On the basis of that importunity, I say unto you. On the basis of that persistent, continual prayer, I say unto you. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find knock, and it shall be opened unto you. That's nothing for you to fear. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son asked bread of any of you that say, Father will he give him a, a, a stone if he ask a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent or if he ask a, an egg will he offer him a scorpion if he then being evil by nature if he then being evil because you have inherited the adamic nature in you before you were saved and sanctified if he then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that that do what tell me out loud not ask him not ask him we need to ask we need to ask that's why jesus told his own disciples he said they must pray they must pray they must pray and they must just carve out time and abandon every other thing push every other thing aside look at acts chapter one acts chapter one reading there from verse uh, reading from verse two unto the day in the which he was taken up after that he through the holy ghost had given commandment to his disciples whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god and being assembled with them together commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait but wait but wait if we want to receive the spirit like elijah like elisha we need to wait and tarry if we want the spirit of the lord uh, to come upon us affect our utterance like david that is spake by the spirit of the lord upon him we need to wait if we need the power of god to go and confront egypt and the magicians of egypt and then be able to swallow up all the serpent all the rods that became serpent that the magicians threw down if we want to be able to so work the work of god that even the magicians of egypt will tell pharaoh their lord their master their king this is the hand of god if we want to be able to move on in the power of the holy ghost that uh, pharaoh will say go and then even pray for me if you want that spirit upon us like it was upon moses we'll need to tarry we'll need to wait we'll need to pray and really pray if we want a double portion 
ask what I will do of you before I be taken away from you. I pray thee, Master Elijah, let the double portion of thy spirit come upon me. You have asked a hard thing. However, if you see me when I be taken away from you, it shall be so. And if it's if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And they two went together and they discussed. All of a sudden, the chariots came and took Elijah away. And Elisha saw him and he said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel. And then the garment of Elijah fell down. He took the garment, he tore his own garment, and then he went to the riverside Jordan. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he smote the river as Elijah had done before. And the water parted here and there. And the people that were watching the 50 sons of the prophets, they said, The spirit of Elijah is upon Elijah. If we want that double portion, the spirit of God upon us, we will pray, we will wait upon the Lord. That's what the disciples did here. And they waited upon the Lord, being assembled with them. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They wanted to be diverted, and they wanted to be asking some other questions. He said unto them, It is not for you to know the times and the season with the Father has put in his own power, but he shall receive power. That's what you need, he shall receive power. You are going to evangelize in Jerusalem where they crucify the Lord. Ye shall receive power. You are going to go to Judea. Why those people are unbelieving? Ye shall receive power. You want to go to Samaria in where they practice syncretic religion and mixed tradition with a little bit of the word of God. And they have the sorcerer by Jesus there, uh, tormenting them and uh, deceiving them. And they say that that's the power of God. He had blindfolded them. He had put them inside his pocket, inside his bag. And everybody bowed down to him you want to be able to go there to samaria and dislodge that evil power and to totally crush all the power of that deceiver and turn the minds of the people away from darkness unto light you need to receive power you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you then will you be witnesses unto me in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You want to go to the uttermost part of the earth? Where they do not know the Lord? Where there is deep idolatry? Where they have never heard the name of Jesus? And you want to be able to go there and speak to them convincingly. That when you speak, the Lord walk with them. Confirming the word with signs following. It's going to take power and it's going to take tarry. Waiting for the Lord. And that's why... After the Lord had gone, in verse 12, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olives, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, and they, were, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Andrew and uh, Thomas and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Simon Zeloty, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. They continued in prayer. They continued in prayer. They continued in prayer. If we're going to have evangelists today with the power of God, we need to have people that will continue in prayer. If we're going to have missionaries today that have the power of the Holy Ghost upon their lives, we need the people that wait and tarry in prayer. If we're going to have men and women that will be so filled, so saturated, so empowered, energized by the power of the Holy Ghost, we need men and women that will wait, that will tarry in prayer, waiting for the Holy Ghost to come upon them. They all continued in prayer with the women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. It was in that praying mood. It was in that solemn assembly. Without any frivolity, without any carelessness, without any hypocrisy, without any show, without any uh, kind of a uh, superficial outward action. It was in such a meeting they were. And the day of Pentecost came. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord, united. All with one accord, in agreement. With one accord in one place and suddenly... There came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, 
and it filled all the house where they were sitting. They had no other mind. They had no other preoccupation. They had no other thought. They had no other desire. They just wanted the power. The power of the Holy Ghost to come upon them. And then it says, and they appeared unto them, proving tongues like a sapphire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Glorious day. All filled. No exception. And they were all filled. The men and the women. Because all those people, their minds were one. Their attitudes were one. Their desires were one. Their wills were united together. Only what the Lord wanted them to wait for, were they waiting for. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues. Nobody taught them. Nobody taught them. It's not copycat. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Check up. After that, chapter 2 is power everywhere. In chapter 3, and I saw the person that had been born lame, that's how I was healed, silver and gold, I buy none. What I have, I give unto thee, rise up and walk. Check it up. In chapter 4, when they came together and they prayed, even the building shook physically. Once again, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Check up. In chapter 5, Anas and Sapphira that tried to deceive. When the Holy Ghost filled the church, they just died right there. Check it up. As Peter was going on the street, the Holy Ghost so walked that the shadow of Peter coming upon them, it just healed the sea. Have you seen in chapter 7, when he looked at the face of Peter filled with the Holy Ghost, it was like they saw the face of an angel. And then, have you seen in chapter 8, that Philip, being filled with the Holy Ghost, they went to Samaria, and many evil spirits were cast out, and many people that were sick, they were healed, and there was more joy in the city. Check it up in chapter 9. You'll find that the fear of the Lord was upon all the churches, and then the churches grew, and the word of God prevailed that the Spirit of God will come down today. I said that the Spirit of God will come down today and come upon the men and come upon the women if we're all with one accord, if we're waiting, if we're tarrying, if we're holding on to the promise and the prophecy that the power of God will come upon the people of God. Tell me, how can we evangelize this city? How can we evangelize this country? How can we evangelize this continent of black, dark Africa without the power of the Holy Ghost? If you want to have a part in the end time harvest of the work of the Lord, you rise up and tell the Lord, there's one thing I need. The Holy Ghost upon me. The Holy Ghost upon me. The power and the fire upon me. Uh, John truly indeed baptized with water unto repentance. But ye shall be baptized, ye shall be filled, ye shall be saturated, ye shall be immersed, ye shall be deep, ye shall be totally filled with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Call upon the Lord and let him do it. Call upon the Lord and let him do it. Call upon the Lord and let him do it. Yes, he can do it. If we are serious as those early disciples were serious, if we come into a solemn assembly as uh, Joel called the people to a solemn assembly, if it's the burden of our heart like it was the burden of the heart of Elisha, Still possible today, still possible today, still possible today. If you thirst, if you desire, if you pray, if you have been saved and sanctified, and you want nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, but the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost. The power and the fire of the Holy Ghost. The power and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. The anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What kind of Christian are you without being filled with the Holy Ghost? How weak you are without being filled with the Holy Ghost. How prayerless you are without being filled with the Holy Ghost. How easily discouraged you are without being filled with the Holy Ghost. How without knowledge, the depths and the mystery of the knowledge of the Lord you are without the feeling, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. How, how, how much afraid, fearful, 
fearful of the devil, fearful of evil powers you are, fearful of bad Jesus. Fearful of the powers of darkness you are without the feeling, without the unction, without the anointing, without the power, without the gift of the Holy Ghost upon your life. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. You need that power. You need that power. Brother, sister, you need the power. You need the power to be able to do exploits in these last days. You need the power of the Holy Ghost upon you. It shall come to pass afterward. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Upon my servants, upon my handmaids, in those days will I, will I pour out my spirit. Receive your portion before you go.